You think he can be as good as Steph Curry in the NBA? Heck no! He gonna be better than Steph Curry in the NBA. Lonzo had that same impact Magic had. Oh God! I'm trying to tell you. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't even impact. know what to do. I don't even know what to do. The aftermath of the family who caused one of the biggest splashes that the basketball world has ever seen seems to be a far uglier turnaround than we could have expected. With the backing of their loudmouth dad, 2016 Chino Hills basketball craze gave the Ball Brothers the world of opportunities that led to two of the three to play and find real success at the highest level of professional basketball. For what should be a happy ending, as the mastermind behind it all fades behind the scenes, and the kids who should have been at the center stage of their own stories show why their game is good for more than just an overtime video. At times, this looks like to be the case, as Leangelo will pop up with big shooting numbers in the G League, showing that even the worst of the brothers has a shot at the league. Lamelo was a damn all-star in his second season, and Alonzo Ball can do everything at a high level in the NBA. What can Alonzo do? He can, can guard. Okay. He can Agreed. shoot. Agree. He can play make. His IQ. He can rebound great for his position. Yeah. What can't Lonzo, Lonzo do? Ball. Can't stay healthy. You saying I'm loving. That has nothing to do with the game. Yes, it does. Lonzo Ball's career up to this point has been one of the oddest cases in NBA history. And with the ongoing injury concerns, it seems to just get weirder. But comparative to his younger brothers, Lonzo was at the most normal developmental path to the NBA. Despite Geno Hills being the most unorthodox system in high school basketball, Lonzo immediately had a role in a system he would play for the rest of his life. Pick and roll ball handler who can kick out the ball, hit roll men, and push in transition, while being a big guard who can switch one through three. He seemed perfect for the modern NBA, and when he's on the floor, that seems to be true. As the only one in the ball family to play a real game at the collegiate level, Lonzo greatly benefited from being able to get away from the grasps of his dad and play in an actual system, where he totally excelled. With one of the better seasons of the 2010s, even though Merkel Fultz was the first pick, this was no doubt Lonzo's draft. The hype for the oldest brother was ridiculous entering the NBA, but around the league, all it seemed to do was put a bigger target on a quiet kid's back, as Patrick Beverly would make it his mission to shut up the new cool kid in class who really hadn't said a word, it became clear that the over-the-top LA lifestyle was not the perfect match for the guy who really seemed to just want to play basketball. Living up to the expectations of things that you didn't even say destroyed the start of Alonzo Ball's career. Media scrutiny at every twist and turn when adjusting to the speed of the NBA game. Being labeled a bust and a spoiled rich kid and whatever else was thrown at him, it wasn't until LeVar set his focus back to the younger brothers and left Lonzo alone that Lonzo's game would blossom in New Orleans. As Lonzo went back to being an ordinary player out of the media headlines every damn day, Lonzo really began to adapt to the NBA game and found out where his role lied to make an impact at this level. Jumping from 36% from the field and 30% from deep in his first season to 40% and 37% in his third year due to clearly putting in a ton of work and completely revamping his jump shot. Lonzo built his game from being a bust to silently being one of the most underrated guards in the league. Putting up 13, 5, and 5 with two steals a game, shooting a crazy 42% from deep on seven a game in 2022 on the Chicago Bulls showed that when you don't treat the kid like his dad's the damn coach and let him play the game that he knows how, his talent speaks for itself. A 40% three-point shooter playing some of the best defense at his position while throwing two and a half assists every turnover sounds pretty accurate for that electrifying guard coming out of UCLA. As Lonzo finally began putting it all together, this is sadly where we would see the injury that may have ended his career. After 35 games with the Chicago Bulls, Lonzo would be ruled out with a knee injury that required surgery. In a very unforeseen turn of events, which should be a routine procedure, turned to what seems like a medical disaster. Now three surgeries and two years in, Lonzo Ball can't even run at full speed after a cartilage transplant. Puzzling fans and medical professionals alike, the ongoing issues with his lower body are completely out of the ordinary. Maybe it was bad luck, maybe it was the overplaying in his developmental years, which his dad's training program certainly could have played a part in, or maybe it's a combination of things since Alonzo has been dealing with injuries since entering the NBA, failing to play over 65 games in a year ever since rocking his $500 custom sneakers. No one knows the real story about them shoes, though. It was about... Them zo 2s I was playing in, they was not ready. <laughs> they were? Really? No one knows it, but Demo had a backpack, and he had extra, like, four pairs of shoes in there, because I had to switch them every quarter, because they would just rip. 
I mean, that's, if, I, if I had to say, like, why wow. the first two games, like, the real truth is, like, yo, you heard the it wasn't ready. <laughs> Lonzo's injury issues are not only puzzling, but should be a worrying sign for the future of his younger brother in LaMelo Ball. Although being the best of the brothers, on his path to the NBA, there were certainly times that this didn't look like the case. After being ranked in the top 25 of his class through two years at Chino Hills, LaMelo would see his NBA chances start to look pretty bleak. A fall this drastic can only be explained by something equally as crazy and after entering the Lithuanian pro scene at 16 years old due to Lavar's disagreements with Chino Hill's new head coach, giving up his eligibility to score 6 points a game on 26% shooting from the field was a pretty disastrous decision, which Lavar took into his own hands to correct. After moving the brothers from the Lithuanian league, after yet another dispute with a head coach stemming from a lack of playing time, the Ball brothers' stock was at an all-time low, and with college out of the equation a Hail Mary effort, Lavar pulled a move straight out of left field, announcing that the Junior Basketball Association, a professional league built to serve as a substitute for the NCAA, that would pay top high school players for their play. Serving as somewhat of a foreshadowing for leagues like the G League Ignite, this may have been a saving grace if the league wasn't a complete fucking joke. Averaging a 40 point triple double playing a league that was built to be a LaMelo Ball advertisement, this league did little more than cast future doubt on the kid's murky future. But similar to Lonzo, LaMelo Ball would see his return to the spotlight after stepping away from LeVar's atrocious leadership. Enrolling at Spire Academy in an attempt to finally return to NBA draft boards, playing in an actual system, and a last chance to regain respect from scouts at the next level, and now 6'6 LaMelo Ball was a whole different beast. Climbing back into the spotlight at 23rd in the country in basically his only year of normalcy, LaMelo Ball's insane talent level was able to save him from the train wreck of a career path that he was on. After showing his ridiculous talent level in the Australian National Basketball League, LaMelo Ball had completely rebounded from an afterthought to the second best prospect in the 2020 draft. And ever since stepping away from the path less traveled, his play hasn't declined since. 2021 Rookie of the Year, 2022 All-Star, LaMelo Ball has legitimately grown from being the hyped little kid in his brother's shadows to one of the best young players in the NBA. Despite being criticized as a stat stuffer, when on the floor, LaMelo Ball has proven he can carry a team to a winning record, when without him, they're a laughing stock. But again, the issue with LaMelo in the NBA is his lack of availability. Having battled frequent ankle injuries that ended his season in 2023, the same frequent lower body collapse when thrown in an 82-game schedule is evidence. LaMelo Ball is a ticking time bomb on the floor. Although his unorthodox game has proven to be incredibly effective, the ongoing issues that derailed his brother's career should be raising a red flag for the future of LaMelo Ball. What's less of a question mark is the future of LiAngelo, because this dude just straight up sucks, man. After ending his college career before before it even started by stealing from a Chinese Louis Vuitton store, being held in China, freed by Donald Trump, and kicked off the UCLA team, yeah, it still kind of blows my mind. Leangelo Ball's journey to the NBA took a similar turn as his younger brother. Shipped out to Lithuania where he'd shit the bed and leave, JBA MVP, which proved to be a little more than a meme, and a murky future that left him scrambling for answers. The difference between the two, however, other than lacking the height and quickness of his brothers, is that Leangelo Ball never had the ability to recoup his losses. Lonzo got to fend for himself and blossomed out of reach from Lavar. while Melo got his chance to return to the real world at Spire Academy, and Leangelo, well, Leangelo was just kind of left out to dry. After the embarrassment that was the JBA, Liliangelo would spend the coming years training in hopes of getting his chance at an NBA contract. And after landing a chance with the Hornets G League team, things actually didn't look so bad. With explosions like a 26 point game with 6 3 balls to start the year, it looked like the praise as being the best shooter in the family might not be a fantasy after all. And even if not perfectly, his strong frame and pretty shooting stroke does fit the mold of the NBA gold that is a 3 and D guy. Despite the glimmer of hope, what became very clear very quickly is that Leangelo Ball did not have what it takes to keep it together. Shooting just 25% from the field and 11% from deep in the following year before being waived from the G League in what might be his last chance in the NBA. The Ball family will always be cemented in basketball history, and in the future it's possible that the issues that plague them could be outshined by the talent that once had us all glued to their story. But what has become clear at this point is that no one is ever on top forever. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, check out my last video here if you missed it, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.